is really a pleasure to enter, act, and relate to each other on all levels. Levels of business, levels of religion, levels of education, and levels of misogynist lyrics given to us by these so-called gangsta rappers. Gangsta rap has become incredibly popular and profitable. People either like it or hate it. I felt very strongly about gangsta rap. First of all, it was not going to be ever played in my home. Your hands way up in the air and wave them all around like you just don't care. I remember driving my car one afternoon. Damon was in the car with me. Those misogynistic lyrics came on the radio. I'm still on hit legit now, more for wrong. Stroke with the dog pound right behind me. You're rolling with my bitch. That's where you might find me making that. I turned radio off. These kids were calling people out of their name, especially little girls. You don't call me out of my name. You don't know me that well. So let's let's get a grip on that first. We must support and uplift those who are doing things. However, we must also remind them yes. of the responsibility oh, that's right. that they have and carry if they're going to carry messages. Yeah, these kids are expressing themselves, which they're entitled to do. However, there is a way to do it. Mom decided she was going to get respect. I have two sons, and they also understand that I'm crazy. <laughs> they do. They understand very well that I am crazy. She decided to have a meeting with Snoop and Suge Knight, a whole bunch of gangster rappers. I said, well, listen, you need to talk to me, and I need to talk to you. Snoop Doggy Dog in the house with the pound like every day, and I'm right back up in you with Dr. Dre. And like the- I was young, kind of thuggish, not really like, hmm who I am now. So we like, Dion Warwick, what she want to do with us over there? Like, we kind of like scared and shook up. Like, we are in the industry. We're powerful right now, but she's been powerful forever. 30 some years in the game, in a big home with a lot of money and success. Not much scares us, but this got us shook. I told them, I want you all at my home. 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. We show up at our door about like 6.52 because we want to be on time. We want to be prompt. You understand me? Because we realize what we're in the presence of. 7 a.m. My doorbell rang. I remember waking up very early one morning and seeing about 15 SUVs. And I knew what they were there for. My son felt I had lost my mind. She opened the door. I remember she had like a big old walkway. We stepped down. We walked into the living room area. And then she just had to sit down, gave us some drinks. I had ordered some donuts and we had coffee and tea. And we sat and we talked for quite a while. She took control of the room. Like, you we at grandma's house with the plastic on the couch and you... You're trying to be on your, you see candy on the table. You don't even want to take that. You don't even want to ask Granny, do you want some? Then I made a point, a very important one. She said, I wanted to to meet you. And then she said, and I want you to call me a bitch. Uh, what? She said, go ahead. Call me a bitch. She came in and started saying all of that, like using our lyrics against us. It was like... Miss, Miss Warwick, Miss Warwick, Miss Warwick, Miss Warwick, you know, I got respect for you, Miss Warwick. She said, so if you have respect for me, so why, what gives you the right, and she looked at everybody, to call women bitch. Some girls don't have tails, and they don't walk on four legs, so why are you calling them what you're calling them? It's like she was talking to me directly, like, checking me at a time when we thought we couldn't be checked. And you need to change, you know... Your lyrics, and because you're going to be a father one day. One day you're going to be married, or you're going to have a child. It's going to be a little girl. You're going to want that little girl to come to you and say, Daddy, is that you? She just give me all this stuff, and I'm like, I ain't even got no kids. I'm like, man, what is she talking about? But I'm hearing what she's saying, and I'm respecting what she's saying, because we recognize and we realize who she is as far as, like, this is a powerful figure in the music industry. And I'm like, man, why is Dion Warwick talking to me? I told him, if I didn't care about you, I wouldn't be here. This is like when your auntie that got all the wisdom and the money and the power come by grandma's house and be like, bring Snoopy back here. I need to talk to him for a minute. He be like, what do I do, auntie? Shut up and just listen. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to A, B, and C if you want to get to X, Y, and Z. And 
and I'm going to leave it at that. Somebody has got to give them the guidance and somebody that they trust and that they feel they might be able to learn a little bit of something from. Well, I was raised by strong black women, so to have her stick me again like, you know you was raised this way. Don't have me call your mama, your grandma on you. Oh, dear. All right. Okay, I'm going to straighten up. And they promised that they were going to start curtailing the way that they were presenting themselves on recordings. About a year later, I did tone it down on the dog father album. I made it a point to put records of joy and me uplifting everybody and nobody dying and everybody living. Everything is free and ain't no HIV. We were the most gangster that you could be. But that day at Dion Warwick's house, I believe we, we got our gangster that day. I, I think they all kind of grew up. Which is a wonderful thing for me. Everything that she's seen in me, everything that she thought I could be, a father, a mentor, a humanitarian. Dion, I hope I became the jewel that you seen when I was the little dirty rock that was in your house. I hope I'm making you proud. I'm thrilled about it.